A non-profit called Alzheimer's Association is an opportunity to speak to the alumni community and all the attendees here today. So let me hand it over to Bhupas, who will uh, give us some introduction to what his non-profit is about. Thank you, Thank you very much. So we're going to switch gears here a little bit and uh, talk about uh, what uh, the Almond Alzheimer's Association uh, can offer all of us. So uh, my name is Bhupal Benjaram. I'm a volunteer with the Alzheimer's Association. And I'm here with uh, Edi Yao, who is the director of uh, diversity at Alzheimer's Association. So this, this slide here is slightly dated, but uh, the uh, number of people living with Alzheimer's today is roughly six million in the US. And for every uh, person living with Alzheimer's, there's about three, roughly three people taking care of uh, people living with Alzheimer's. So this is a fairly big number given that Alzheimer's does not get as much attention as you know, like uh, heart diseases uh, or other or like cancer, for example, or all sorts of funding. Uh, also, uh, there is often some confusion between what dementia is and what Alzheimer's is. So dementia is a symptom it's a reduction in our cognitive abilities to the point where we are not able to do our everyday tasks. And Alzheimer's is one of the diseases of dementia. So that is that is something that uh, there's some often there's some misconception of what is dementia and what is Alzheimer's. So this. Uh, this here uh, is one of the key slides that I want to get across and the point here is that uh, the 10% of the causes of dementia are actually reversible. So one thing that uh, Alzheimer's Association is trying to advocate and push is uh, to have the cognitive testing as part of the Medicare annual wellness testing. And also even for others who are you know, younger, uh, it's also a, what we also suggest is that to uh, test for cognitive get or test it for cognitive abilities. And if you have any concerns to talk to your doctor about it, uh, to catch them at an early stage because some of these symptoms are reversible. And then, uh, this is uh, the final slide. And the other point that I want to get across is there are several uh, services that the Alzheimer's Association offers, uh, including uh, there's, uh, uh, you can go online and look at uh, the, uh, listen to their webinars. And uh, there are several educational uh, opportunities for families and people who are taking care of people with Alzheimer's. And most importantly, there's also a 24-7 helpline with an option for Hindi-speaking people. 
And, and the, in the, the slide has many more uh, services that the Alzheimer's Association offers that I haven't mentioned here. Okay? So, and then, uh, given the short amount of time I have, I did not want to go through all the slides, but I included several other slides in the backup slides that I'm sure Narain will you know, offer it, make it available for people to look at them offline. Okay? So, thank you very much, and if you have any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Yeah, I have a question. Sure. I'm 70 plus. I'm the oldest guy out here. Every morning when I drive out of my house, I say, did I shut the garage? And I back up my car again, oh yeah, I shut the garage. Is that a, am I headed towards Alzheimer's? <laughs> um, I do that. <laughs> yeah, how many, how many people do that? There you go. <laughs> so. All you guys are old. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, uh, I heard re recently. I read about the Bredesen protocol, and uh, you know he claims an actual cure of Alzheimer's. I mean, uh, do you guys uh, uh, debunk these or? Are you, are you referring to this uh, Dr. The recent uh, test that you were doing the Biogen company? This. Yeah, you were referring to the Dale Bredesen uh, study. That was a, yeah, so his study really took into account some of the major lifestyle factors that can reduce our risk of developing Alzheimer's. Healthy diet, exercise, uh, staying mentally engaged. Um, I'm missing one. Uh, anyway, he takes all of that. Those are all really important things for all of us to do. And the thing that the Alzheimer's Association would say is that his study was small. It was a very small number of people that he worked on. And so what we want to see is for um, other studies to replicate that same effect on a larger sample. So until we see that, we cannot say that that is a promising cure for Alzheimer's. What the, the one study that has shown real promise is the Sprint Mind study. And this is the study that is about um, uh, ma aggressively managing high blood pressure. So people who have hypertension, that is a risk factor for Alzheimer's. And it, we now know from this study that when you man aggressively manage your high blood pressure at 120 instead of 140, it reduces the risk of developing mild cognitive impairment and dementia by nearly 20%. That's pretty significant. So anyone you know who is experiencing high blood pressure, get that message out. And speaking of, in uh, follow-up to what Edie just said is that uh, recently there is a study that came out that uh, has drawn some correlation between uh, gum disease like gingivitis and uh, Alzheimer's. So those of us who neglect to go to the dentist regularly, keep canceling our appointments, don't do that. Hi, uh, I had a question and a sort of a public service uh, announcement. So my question is, to, to what extent um, do genetic factors play a role in Alzheimer's you know, transmission from generation to generation? Sure, that's a great question. So what, what role does genetics play? Genetics actually plays a smaller role than we know. Um, most cases of Alzheimer's are developed because of age as a major risk factor. So it's one in 10 over age 65 and then nearly one in three over age 85. That's the good news and bad news. We all want to live long um, and we're able to survive many other diseases. The brain is a complex organ and we don't know enough about it yet. And so certainly um, that's a big role. Less than 5% of all cases of Alzheimer's is because of uh, genetics, of a deterministic gene that someone has. So certainly if my parent, my grandparent has Alzheimer's, I may have a higher risk but it's not a guarantee that I will get Alzheimer's. Okay, and, and um, my second uh, observation is really, my, my mom had dementia, 
and, and she passed away two years ago, and it was really painful seeing her suffer for five years. And she had not Alzheimer's, but progressive uh, supranuclear palsy, which is another uh, one of the dementia conditions. And one thing that uh, her physician mentioned, which uh, really struck me, is that these uh, dementia conditions, you know, you had some on your slide, they're kind of very, they're close cousins, and he said that, you know, really you just need an aut autopsy to conclusively know what kind of dementia you have. And so that actually prompted us to donate my mother's brain for research. And so if uh, any of folks in the audience have people, unfortunately, who are suffering from dementia, especially terminal kind, uh, maybe consider a uh, donation of the brain. Yeah, I, I donate my brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, 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 they really are looking for brain donations. Yeah, thank, thank you for sharing that um, because that's a really important piece to how we'll solve the puzzle of finding a cure and treatment for Alzheimer's is the second biggest barrier to finding a cure is participation in research. The first biggest barrier is funding for research, um, but that's an important piece. And so the Alzheimer's Association, we have a program called Trial Match, and we can match you with studies that you're eligible for. They need, they need healthy people too. Um, and to participate, and you decide whether you want to or not. Um, I read at least a couple of articles saying that weight training is uh, very important, more than just the physical fitness, which was surprising that you don't see that many senior people in YMCA and so on. But does the Alzheimer's Association push that theory? <laughs> So do we push weight training? Yeah. Not necessarily. I think there have been studies that look at uh, weight-bearing exercises can be beneficial. Um, and I think for other chronic diseases and just for overall health that we need to um, do that. The, the recommendation that we've seen across studies around exercise is that uh, taking the, the recommendation for heart health. So 150 minutes a week is the advice that, that we would suggest. And so that can be 30 minutes of walking. Just brisk walking, you want to get that heart rate up. Um, what about yoga? Yoga is great too, absolutely. And it's got to be something you enjoy, right? So that you're going to do it to make it successful. Yeah. So one more? Sure. One last question. Uh, I've seen a lot of WhatsApp video where they drink coconut uh, oil to get better. Is that real or <laughs> Of course, the coconut oil question. Yes, that, that was quite popular for a while. And again, we encourage as many studies out there to try and look at how to resolve this disease. Co the study with coconut oil, and we saw lots of people, including myself, go out and get a jar of coconut oil at Trader Joe's. The, the issue with that, again, it's a small study that looked at a small number of people, maybe 25 people, and we don't know how much coconut oil they, they ingested. It was actually quite a bit. Um, so there's no harm to it, is what we would say. If you use coconut oil and you eat coconut oil, it's fine. But to go out and recommend it as a treatment for prevention, um, we're not there yet. Yeah. Uh, so that's all the time we have. The last thing I want to mention is on the way out, uh, look for our material on the table on the left-hand side. So there's Edie's business card, and there's several brochures with the 800 number on it and the website. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Rupal and Pili, for coming and uh, sharing this information with the, with the group. Uh, I'm guessing it's OK to share these slides with everybody? OK. So everybody that attended this event is definitely going to get a copy of these slides, because there's a lot more beyond what he projected. He just projected about four or five. Uh, there's a lot of backup slides and a lot more information. Uh, so now. Uh, we'll move on to our next panel. Mon. Thank you very much.